Hello, this is Grant. Welcome back to another episode of Dead Rising 1 Master Run. It's going to be the second to last episode before we wrap everything up, so it's going to be pretty calm, and then we're going to have a lot of fun in the last one. Basically, our task here is we need to go pick up a new generator from the clock tower. This is just a little uh, MacGuffin to go see, tell us to go look at the clock tower, which is now open. There's a hole, which leads to a cave, or I guess it's a sewer system, and that's going to be how we get out of here. At this point, I could easily go up and farm to get level 50. I will hit it by the end of the playthrough, but I f there's not much point. It would just be, a, I think I have a couple percentage increases that are really just not worth it. You could probably do it much earlier, too, if you really sat down and optimized your way through the game for getting 50 as fast as possible. But not really necessary. This is pretty simple. We're just going to head out to the clock tower. I think the clock tower's got like three stickers on it if you really want to farm PB that way. Or not farm, but get get PB from stickers. I wanna say there's like a hundred In theory you could probably you pass by I assume every single sticker in the game at some point. So you could probably easily do it where you go get every PB sticker in this run. I just don't feel it's necessary. And you have the issue is you have to go get captured by the cult. That's the big one that you have to find time on day two for that. So here they're just basically interested Introducing the idea of this new path out, which, with some of the advent of the new perfume Isabel's making, is going to be a viable option. I do feel that overtime mode's kind of dull in terms of gameplay, because it's really only there to kind of finish out the story. Damn it. There's not really much that happens, like, there's no psychopaths, you just have the military. And the final boss. And they do have some kind of weird things too, like with the drones or the whole tank battle that's going to come up. Alright, I'm just going to go heal up, use up some items. It would have been nice if this took place during the day. It's, it gets pretty dark at this point. This is a small... You can actually, if you get the toy laser sword... <laughs> I was wondering for a second there, it was like when I was playing, because all of a sudden I just see the cash going everywhere and everything, it exploded. But they shot a cash register. There was that brief moment where I was like, what? What's the thing? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I wonder how, I don't know how it would change. I would, it'd be cool if they had just some more new content in here that wasn't just go around doing what you already kind of did. Oh, the laser sword, the toy one, you can get in a toy shop over here. It'll glow red anytime it's in your inventory. You don't even have it out. So it's a good way to light stuff up if you have a dark TV or you just want something more to show stuff off. Depending on... I'd consider... I considered having it for the run just for the sake of making things easier to see, but when you're at low level, it's quite difficult because that will have to take up a slot, and that is not a good weapon by any standard. I don't. I think you might. You can get a kill with it. There's some toy weapons where you just can't kill anything with it. Like that's the point. Like the water gun and whatnot. In theory, they have their uses. Like I know you can use the water gun to kind of like some survivors. You have to hit to get them to join your party to like knock them out to their senses. Well, you can hit them with the no damage weapon, like the water gun, to help yourself out there. It's too bad. I thought it would be really cool if they had some crazy side quest that was never officially talked about that required getting a bunch of random items from the mall and using them. Like, maybe they have, uh, say, a side quest where you have to, like, grow a plant or something and that'll give you an item for another big thing. So you have to go get the water gun and water the plant at certain times during the day and get, like, soil and, I don't know, a shovel to dig it. It's never officially advertised, yeah. So this is the helicopter. The trick is to get up here on the shelter, 
and you're going to want to aim for either the pilot or the rotors on the back or top. These will do the most damage. It's a little hard just because every time you pull up the gun, it's going to point straight forward. So you have to like look for it, go zoom up, try and shoot it, all while it's shooting at you. Generally, it will come straight at you and fire its guns in a line. You can also fire missiles. I get really lucky here. That seems to have gone down really fast. I think either I got really lucky and I hit the pilot, or that its damage was still there from when I fought it before. I don't really know how it works if you try to leave the area, if they will heal up or not. I know in 2, that's not always the case. You can leave and just come back and do a fight over the course of several days. It's weird. So now we just have to go out and get some queens. The best way to do this is go to Paradise Plaza. You can actually go and get as many oranges as you want here, and they're next to a blender, so you can put those together and make nectar, which makes queens more common, I believe. I think in 2, if you use nectar, it also makes queens fly to you. I don't think that's the case in this game. The trick here is to make sure you have your volume up, because you can hear the queens. And if you hear it, then it's a lot easier to know to look. I think he... I think he actually destroyed his own drone there. That was kind of cool. I didn't see that the first time I played through here. But here I'm just going to heal up and we're going to basically just go over to this blender. Juices are really cool, but it's no one ever remembers the combos. There's one that makes you like more attractive to zombies, that's Zombate. You can use that to keep zombies off your survivors because they'll come for you. Or just to clear out an area faster because they're all... makes them speed up and come at you faster. There's, I believe there's a painkiller one which gives you damage reduction. That can be good for psychopath fights. I think honestly if you had a good melee weapon and that, you could probably just straight up fight them one on one, especially something like Larry, where he's just going to stand and swing at you and you can do the same to him. Uh, ones like Cletus, that might not be the case. You have Quick Step, which just like doubles your walking speed. That one's pretty cool, it doesn't last very long, but it can be pretty useful if you're going for like melee strategies with some fights. And there's also a like, randomizer. You can use that. Anything that doesn't make like another juice will be randomizer by default, which has like a 50% chance to make you throw up. I think it can also give you a random potion effect or a random juice effect. I don't know. I never really make it. It's usually just so risky that even if you that you either won't get something you need or you'll just throw up. Like it's like to go out of that trouble in a boss fight. It'd be like, yeah, randomizer, drink it, and then you get nectar and have to throw up. Like it's not gonna help you at all. You're going to watch when you give it to Elizabeth. This, this particular animation gets used so much. Like that little shrug talking in the very general caress when they like grab it. It's a little overused in my opinion. But mainly just because you can sit and like look at it here. It's really obvious. You're going to inject me with that, huh? Okay, Doc. Get this over with. Where'd you get this orange? I guess it might be in, have been in the first aid kit. <clears throat> At least I won't have to worry about turning into one of them for a while. Okay, next on the agenda, figure out a way to get the hell out of here. While I was isolating the hormone, I managed to identify a pheromone that suppresses the attack instinct in adult parasites. In other words, the zombies don't like the way it smells. If you give me a little more time, I should be able to produce some of this pheromone. They think it smells bad? You think we could use something like that to keep them away from us? I like the idea like that with the whole pheromone keeping them away. Them get out of here. But it seems a little bit too... Yes. Could try like... Oh, I just found something that can keep zombies off of us in really tight cave. confines. Outside, like, I just found... Up the way out of here with really tight confines with lots of zombies. It's like you don't think we could. It's a little cheesy. It works. Your anti-zombie perfume. It 
could keep us safe in that cave. I think it's a big leap assuming that leads out. I mean, it, to get the hell out of here. it gets you away from the military, but you still have the issue of getting out of town. Because the whole area is quarantined. I want to see how that works. There's got to be a reason. I think, I assume they probably end up bombing the city eventually and just burning it down. Well, this is Grant. And don't take your zombie perfume for granted.